Hi and welcome to another mini review for the Cambridge University Film Review Show. Joining me this week is Beck. Hi Beck. I will be reviewing The Big Short. So Beck, what did you think? I loved it because I felt like there was the initial period where it came out and, and people were praising it and then it, it got nominated for everything and there was this backlash mm -hmm. of people saying, well, it, it didn't deserve to be nominated. Um, but no, I, I really loved it. Why? Because this is a film I saw and I thought, okay, that was fine, parts of it are reasonably interesting, but it didn't, it didn't particularly impress me. I didn't understand where all the awards came from. I felt like it was, it, it took an issue of which people are, are to a degree a bit tired and, but are still angry about it and it presented it with this interesting spin. It did this very kind of cynical view of things. But it wasn't necessarily a badly cynical way to see it. But what it did was it demystified a lot of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of this Wall Street jargon of, you know, the, the idea that, that all of this is so complicated that we can't possibly, you know, resolve this. We can't possibly find out what went wrong. And, and the movie, you know, in, in about 30 minutes says, well, actually we can. Here's mm -hmm. what happened. Here's what went wrong but also here's the story. And it's almost like mocking this idea that, you know, here's actually what went wrong, this is how much people lost, but look, here's also an underdog story that you can watch. And I feel like that was kind of a, a brave decision. Mm. But I don't think that decision worked. I think it jars quite a lot. Mm. I don't think it fits together very well at all. And I feel like the whole, you have these really clever, really good summaries of what went wrong, and then it's just strangely put against Steve Carell and Batman all together and I just I just think it really didn't work for me um, and not to say that I found individual elements really good but as in a, I don't think it felt like a cohesive whole for me. It, it did really feel like an adaptation of a non-fiction book basically. Mm -hmm. it, it was these like these separate stories um, but uh, I disagree I, I think that that's exactly why it worked it, is, is it would is it would take several pieces of the picture and show them to you. And, and instead of trying to focus on, you, you know, what you can't accuse this, this film of is, is there's almost no mention of the politicians or almost no mention of, of like the actual CEOs. Mm -hmm. But that would, that would have been like a two and a half hour movie. Instead what they do is they take these, these small pieces that are, you know, in themselves emblematic of the wider problem and then delve into the detail. <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't think I've really seen a movie about the financial crisis in which the main characters went to Florida and saw the actual empty houses, or saw the people struggling to pay, to pay the mortgages yeah. on those houses. It's always very much, you know, people in in suits in these high rises de dealing with it as an abstract problem. This movie actually takes you to, shows you the physical side of you know what what is a CDO. Hmm. Well, it's it's this and this, but here actually the movie comes and, and shows you what a CDO is, in, in, in like in real concrete terms. Yeah, no, I don't fault that. Um, I mean, I th the, one of the best kind of parts of the film, I think, when they you know celebrity cameos and they'll go through this amazing thing and talk about okay, this is <laughs> this is why this happened in a really easy, relatable way. Sometimes with very attractive people in baths, um, mm. and I think that that was part of the strongest film. But I see, I, I disagree. Really? For me, that was the weakest part of the film. That's interesting. When the movie was, was kind of moralizing, when it was kind of sort of mocking the audience, I felt that was when it was at its, at its weakest. I felt like uh, it, that was when it was picking the wrong targets. Mm. Because it, a lot of it was like, you know, oh, you, you, you let all of this happen, you were looking the other way, and that message is being delivered to us by... Uh, the director of Anchorman and <laughs> Anchorman <laughs> 2, you know. <laughs> yeah. It feels a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. I'm a bit sad Will Ferrell did make it into the film. I think it would have been mm. a powerful addition to the cast. I actually, I, was, I wasn't the biggest fan of Steve Carell in this movie, and, I'm, and I really like Steve Carell. I thought Christian Bale was very good. Yeah, I thought really Ryan good. Gosling um, was excellent. Mm. It was definitely the best Ryan Gosling performance I've seen since Drive, probably. Yeah. 
Um, so, I, I mean, you, you know, there, there's a lot in this movie that's, the, you know, to use the word problematic. Uh, there's, uh, you know, the book itself featured a lot of female characters that got cut. Um, Again, the attitude towards the audience, but um, I, I think it, it compensates for it in surprising ways. Yeah, okay. Well, I, think, I think that's a fair analysis. Um, you haven't convinced me, but that's fine. I'm sure the world's banks have more incentives than greed. You're wrong. We hope you enjoyed our mini-review, uh, and we hope to be doing a few more of these with other special guest stars. Yeah. We'll see you another time. Thank you. Bye.